broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web. You're listening to CHSRHealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSRHealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. Relax Radio listeners, I'm your host, Dan Reardon, with our co-host, Dr. Krishna. Dr. Krishna is the founder, and I'm the president of Relax.org. It can be downloaded from the App Store or the Play Store. You can also visit us at relaxx.org. With us today is Linda McKenzie, the founder of HealthyLife.net. We're excited to have Linda on the program with us. And there's a lot we're all going to learn in this discussion around positive energy and positive energy in action. So let's dive right in, Linda. Welcome uh, to the show, and we're excited to have you. Well, I am so glad to be here. I am in awe of your show. It's been really well-received, and I'm so glad to be here. Oh, well, thank you. Well, one of the first questions we had that we wanted to talk to you about was this concept of um, that we have the right to see the glass is half empty or half full. And I know in, throughout my life it's been such an interesting process to really get that perspective right. So I wanted to hear you talk about that and give us some perspective on it. Well, basically, uh, that's all about being positive. And uh, you can view something that's half empty or half full. Either way is correct. But if you take a look and just inside your heart and you take a look and you take a breath and you just think of all the positive things, then you get uplifted. If you think of the negative, you feel down. So what happens is when you look at things half full, it actually has many uh, benefits to your mind, your body, and your spirit. In actuality, if you have positive emotions, it actually boosts your immune uh, system to work efficiently. And uh, so, therefore, if you're even stressed or and, – and it's just a natural thing. If, you, if, if you're thinking bad things, guess what? You feel bad. But if you think good things and you have hope, you feel good. It's really that simple. Yeah, it it does sound so simple, and I know at times, I, I know I've struggled at times going, wow, you know, why am I not thinking that way? But I do agree that uh, it has tremendous impact to just view it from that positive lens. What about some of the, the eight keys on pain, staying positive and the benefits? Love to have you talk us through what those eight are. Oh, sure. You know, what happens is is I've been um, doing a positive radio net, uh, show since 1996, and I've, I actually healed myself from a chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, Epstein-Barr, using positive methods and, of course, changing diet and whatever. So I started lecturing on this um, for many years and lectured at pharmaceutical conferences and all sorts all, all over the place on why um, being positive is the best thing that you can do, as well as writing a movie and doing a whole bunch of things, and including starting this positive radio network, because we want to make sure that people get the best of the best all the time. So there's, I, I, after researching for many, many years, um, I found that there are really eight things that you have to do to stay positive. One is to give up control. Um, you know, when you are in control all the time and you don't let go, your goals, everything becomes so rigid that you end up not getting what you want. I mean, the only time, you know, God's got a sense of humor. And if you don't, whatever you want to call God is fine with me. But God has a sense of humor because if you want it, you don't get it. The minute that you don't want it and you let it go, it comes to you. So it's a matter of letting go of the control so that you can manifest many, many things rather than just one significant criteria that you have. I mean, you you can wish for a million dollars or you can just wish for prosperity and maybe God will give you two million. So, you know, what you think um, and what you want to control 
stops it. it. It creates significance on it, and then your mind can't flow and whatever. So that's one thing is uh, give up control. The next is don't be logical or rational. You know, rational is really a thought where when your heart and your mind can't come together, then all of a sudden it's called rationality, okay? But when if your heart and your mind can't come together, it's just not right. So you can do the left brain, which is we can get into that, but it's a long process. But the left brain is very logical, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And the right brain is very creative. It actually is the thing that helps manifest what you want. But the right brain is really sweet, and it just lets the left brain stay in control. La, da, 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 da. I mean, it's enough to drive you crazy. So what you want to do is... You want to make sure, like what I do now, is uh, if I want something, I plan it down to the infinite detail, all the way down. And then you know what I do with it? I take up that thing, and I put it in a ball, and I throw it out the window. And I know that that stuff will come to me. But if I am sitting there trying to be too logical, it's A, B, C, D, E, I don't allow things and the universe to work with me to create the things to happen. So the other thing is don't be too logical or rational. Use a little intuition with that. The other thing is watch negative thoughts, words, and actions because what you think and what you speak affects how you act. And when and this is an old universal law of like attracts like. So if you are going to use negative words, negative thoughts, negative actions, guess what? Karma is going to get you. Karma is going to get you. So you don't want that. So you want to stay as positive as you can and, and, you know, and be mindful of what you're doing and saying and try and work that and incorporate that in. The next is to take responsibility for your actions. By denying responsibility, I call that Sammy should. I should have done this. I should have done that. I should have, you know, you know stop. Just take responsibility for your actions, and, and this way it shortens um, – any kind of change that you're going through. The third is, the fifth is like, don't live in the past. Look, everything is done. It's already over. You can't change the past. So what you want to do is kind of let the past go. The other thing is, number six is don't live in the future. You don't have any idea what that future is going to bring. You have no idea. What you think is going to happen may not happen. And even when you're psychic, it's still, there's still a percentage of chance that it's not going to happen. So don't live in the past. Don't live in the future. The only thing that is real is the moment that you live in. And so right now, in this moment, we're together. And it's a wonderful moment. And it's positive, And it's, in, it's great. And so live in that moment as much as you can. Now, we are creatures of habit. So, of course, you know, we're going to go ahead and say, uh, try and live in the past or look to the future, but try and stay in the moment as much as you can, and then you'll have a very productive, positive life. The other thing is to, uh, number seven, is to use intuition, and what I hope is carved on my tombstone, if I can get anybody to understand these three things, you'll have a happy, healthy life, and it's to feel, know, and trust. When you feel something's right, when you know that it's right, and when you trust that it's right, then it's right. When you use your gut feel, you're going to be right 99.99% of the time. The minute that you get your head involved or your mind, you're going to be off a lot. So that's number uh, seven. And number eight is to accept change and learn to walk through fear. Because the only thing that is going to be there for you forever, the only thing that we can rely on is that it's going to change. Okay, and change is cyclical. There's an up and a down, and there's a way that you navigate change, and it's kind of in a spiral. And so when you can accept change and uh, learn how to navigate change, you get through the trying times a little easier, and what goes up must come down, and what comes down must go up. So you're you're never really in the state. The only way that you can... Um, Navigate change is you can take a short road or you can take the long road. But you're going to get there all the same because as much as you think you're in control, there's a little thing that's called fate, and that's a little bit there too. And then we can get through walking with fear too. But those are the eight keys that I found to stay positive. 
That is such a good list. I was making some notes while you talked. And the very first one that you talked about on giving up control is so fascinating because I've always thought of it in terms of when I reflect on my past uh, and where I've tried to use force to make things to happen, and it's control, but I've used the word force, but it's like, hey, I can do that. I'll do it. And so many of the times I look back at when I had that mode of forcing something, it was just the wrong thing to be doing, and it wound up with outcomes that I really either, A, didn't want to have or just just uh, wound up not being the, the outcome that was really such a good thing for me to be in the middle of. Actually, and it probably was. Control. You know, actually, though, if you think What's about that? it, it probably was because what you did was you learned something. And when you learn something, right, you, and once you learn it completely, you never have to go through that again. And then your path is, is way open. So you can never make a mistake. You can, again, it's just a short term way or a long way. So I think everything that we do makes us. You know, it's, I mean, I wasn't, you know, like this. I mean, I'm 71. It took a long time for me to get all this stuff together, you know? <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. It's taken me a while to figure it out, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, Dr. K, I know you had uh, a question or two for Linda. No, I was listening. I was really, really learning from her eight steps of uh, whatever. Linda, I want to take you, you know, it's like, yes, we have all these answers and questions and all that, but you do have this feeling of there is something beyond these eight questions, beyond this energy, and there is something outside of us, some paranormal or extra normal. You get into this. How did you get into all this uh, positive energy? Or like, there must be a story behind all this <laughs> happening. I mean, it's not just you read in the books, right? Oh no, I don't read. No, no, I mean I do read. But the thing is, is, is that uh, right now what I do is I wake up in the morning and I say, okay, God, what do you want to do, and what are we doing today? I don't make an agenda. I just follow, and everything just comes to me. And so when you can reach that point, but it didn't. It took a long time. You know, when I was uh, I I I was uh, psychic by the time I was eight years old. I saw God at that time when I was eight, and um, and then I. Over the years, I developed many psychic abilities. Uh, there's actually 17 distinct psychic abilities. I have them all. I've been asked to work with the with the government, which I turned down. I was uh, one time one of the presidents, and I've been through a lot. Asked me to be their psychic when they were in office, and I said no. I don't do politics, or lottery tickets. I don't or sports books. I don't do that either. And um, but, you know, there is something greater than ourselves, and a lot of times everybody wants to talk about this consciousness and this quantum uh, consciousness, and it all exists. But, you know, for me, um, I believe that something had to start this, and it's not a big bang theory. Even somebody had to start the two things hitting each other, right? So I believe that God is there, and whatever you want to call God is fine with me because God is not a person or a thing. It's actually energy. And the energy is comprised of love and love, not just for your fellow man or for a man or a woman. It's divine love, which is so potent that it creates light. And light is God. Light and love is God. And so what I feel is that we are all given gifts and we are all psychic, and it's a matter of development and a matter of using it. And so I saw God when I was eight, and then all of a sudden started getting all these different things happening to me. Um, and I actually um, tested them all out, you know, for many years because I have this kind of crazy brain. You know, I was an engineer for 18 years uh, as well, and I just was the first data comm engineer in any airline in the world, developing air-to-ground radio and satellite networks and redesigned the U.S. Senate Computer Center. I did a whole bunch of stuff. But um, but by the time I was uh, – metaphysics was always there. and um, And so by the time I was 15, I had read every – 
metaphysical book in the New York Public Library. And I had been working daily with all these things and uh, listening and praying and meditating, I guess because prayer is kind of a meditation, and um, and doing all of that. And I trusted God so much that um, it was fine. And then when I was about 18, I was busting psychics, okay, in New York. I grew up in New York City. And there was a lot of uh, psychics that were taking money from people. So I would dress and talk differently and go in there and bust them and say, hey, God doesn't want you to do that. You get off there and stop that. Until finally one day I met this other psychic, and it was really interesting. Um, and they, uh, the government took handprints, and they did all sorts of stuff, and they kept me on file for many years on many different things. And, um, and at that point, God said, I want you to stop. And I said, what? And I said, I'm doing all this stuff. And they said, no, no, just stop. I said, okay. I said, what do you want me to do? And then I just kind of went, and I became an engineer. And then around 1987, around the harmonic convergence, I came out a little bit and uh, kicking and screaming. People were saying, hey, you wanna, you're a psychic. And I said, no, 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 I can give you common sense. And, but for all these years, so at 37, I had honed my craft, and I had learned how my psychic ability worked, what was from God, and what was from me. Because, you know, we're here. There's 11 energy zones that I navigate when I do a reading or I'm doing things. And I've been in documentaries. I've been on ABC, NBC, BBC, in Japan TV. I've done a lot, a lot of things. So, um, But I tested myself. For example, one of the things that I can do is I, can, I have precognizant dreams. And so what I did, uh, Krishna, was I wrote down the dreams, and I gave them to a girlfriend of mine. And I said, could you hold these? And so then when a dream would come true, and I'd realize it came true, it could be months later, I would go with a witness that was with me, and I'd go and I'd say, hey, Eileen, do you remember that dream with the roller coaster? Could you get that out and read it to me? Not even touching it. And then she would verify. So after many years, I would learn when I was willful trying to make things happen and when I kind of just got this direct connect to God and could get it open to the energy and understand. And that's going beyond universal energy, which is a completely different energy. So I go direct to, uh, to source, to God energy, completely there. So there's a, a little difference. So that's, was that what you're asking me? Yes, I was. And one of the difficulties I have, uh, Linda, it's easy to say that you no know, light comes from energy. Light is a form of energy, easy to understand. And the photons, and, and you have been an engineer, and uh, Dan is an engineer. But when it comes to saying, okay, consciousness is pure energy, and then you go on to try to convince people that even thoughts, they are coming, you know, the source is energy. How do you see that and how do you communicate that to people that, you know, yes, these are all energies? Well, you know, people have their own timing and paths. Everybody is different. So the funny thing is, is everybody thinks that we're all the same. And they get very upset when um, somebody doesn't understand something that you're saying or they don't feel the same way that you do. And they really can't, you know, because basically... Um, you know, they're ra raised differently. Everybody has uh, been raised in a different way and, and has different belief systems. And only as there's certain periods that I've found that you're very open to some of these things. As you, if you're open to this when you're very young. Now, when I was young, nobody was psychic in my family. Or if they were, they said, hey, stop that. You know, you're crazy. Um, my grandson, of course, is a little bit... Um, there too but when he was one or two years old i started training him so he got where the source was very quickly and everybody gets different times and everybody's path is different so sometimes you'll be able to uh, they say that when the te when you're ready the teacher comes so um, basically you can't convince everybody but when you are coming from truth and the and the people are ready then they can understand you. So, um, you know, I've never batted myself against a wall to try and teach somebody anything. Because what happens is they already know it. It's already there. So it's just a matter of opening up for truth. 
So um, does that help? Yeah. No, I think what you're saying is that to speak their language. I mean, if, if they're not ready for this language, then you have to stay with their language. Um, well, way, right? well, you know, I, I kind of feel that everybody's in their right place at their right time, right? And so uh, since everybody is in exactly the right place at the right time, you just have to live your life and be open to that. And whoever is meant to hear is it will hear. For example, I don't, um, you know, I, I don't worry about numbers or the logic of everything because I know that if I'm helping just one person, if someone here that's listening to me on this radio show and I help give them one idea, then that's all I have to do. And then they'll get the next person and the next and the next. You know, when you're a teacher, you kind of have to allow it to mold to itself rather than having one set agenda. You know, you just have to be actually living in the flow. It's kind of like free falling, okay? Like when I said in the morning, okay, God, tell me what to do. And then God tells me. So if he wants me to help somebody, okay. If I feel no, so it's a matter of, A, know yourself, and then B, Put the stuff out there. Whoever is meant to hear it will hear it. I don't think you have to struggle with it. Yeah, that's great insight. We're going to take a short break here at Relax Radio, and we'll be right back with Linda to talk about some additional insights around positive energy. If you want the most compelling, universally available platform in the practicing of meditation, mindfulness, and intermittent silence, then you need to know about the app called Relax.org. That's Relax with two X's, because when you go to this app, you really do relax. It helps your body, quiets your mind, and connects you to your flame in the world of consciousness. It's always with you, so you can use it any time. Isn't this your time to be peaceful, happy, and prosperous? Find out more at relax.org. If you're looking for unique items at affordable prices, then you should try Dream Product. From apparel to beauty, from shoes to therapeutic relief products, visit HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on Dream Products, and maybe your dreams might just come into reality. Imagine living everyday life on purpose. Now imagine yourself easily navigating through life's changes and stress from a soul level. For insights into the journey of the human soul, let Dr. Krishna Bada be your guide. His book, Journey from Life to Life, will help you demystify life, death, and everything in between. It gives you clarity on how you can have a successful life and a smooth transition into the world beyond. Who wouldn't want that? Get Journey from Life to Life by Krishna Bada, MD, at Amazon.com. You have too little time to shop, so try Farm Fresh to you. They deliver organic food the way nature intended, delivered straight to your home or office, economically. Visit our web advertiser page and click on Farm Fresh to you now. Feel like the super person you are meant to be? It's easy at liveandbreathesolutions.com. They don't just talk about healthy living. Their superfoods are combined with products you use daily, so you're actually getting a healthy living at great prices, too. Imagine chocolate, gluten-free, organic snacks, mixes, and ingredients, all but a click away at liveandbreathesolutions.com. So make life simple to be healthier. Just live and breathe and go to liveandbreathesolutions.com. This is Jack Maher from the band Feed the Kitty. It's important to support the artists you love, and you can do that and get something authentic for yourself. Rock.com has the most coveted, licensed merchandise of music, culture, and entertainment. So go to the advertiser page and click on Rock.com now. Make your day start out right. Coffee and tea are what most people need to help start their day. So it's no secret that you want the very best taste. That's where CoffeeandChai.com comes in. They're proud to display a variety of coffee and tea from all over the world. They have a wonderful assortment of coffee flavors and talk about teas. They have all kinds for the body, mind, and soul, which are great to drink any time of day. Visit CoffeeNChai.com now. That's coffee, the letter N, Chai.com. CoffeeNChai.com. Welcome back 
to Relax Radio. This is Dan Reardon, your host, with co-host Dr. K, and Linda's with us as well. Linda, just picking up where we left off, um, one of the questions that I wanted to make sure we addressed was how positive energy helps eliminate fear. Well, um, the thing is, is that fear is um, a reaction. And it goes back to the dinosaur days. You know, when you saw a dinosaur, you either fight it or flight it. You know, you flee, okay? And fear is there to kind of teach you lessons and to make you... I believe that we're here on Earth for two reasons. One is to give service to others and help others. The other is to get back to God. You have your own personal journey, and, and you know, you want to be part of that light so that you never have to come back over and over and over and over and over again. So, um, and so what you want to do is, uh, those are the two reasons that I think are prime uh, of what we're here for. And so what fear does, you have to make fear your friend because fear is there just to explain to you what is going on and how you can accomplish that. It gives you, once you learn something and that's fearful, you know, that you're fearful of, and you learn it, you never have to do that lesson again. So there's a little uh, song that I had written, and it's called Fear is Your Friend. And so it goes like this. I'm not going to sing it, but I might come out, but we'll see. Fear is your friend, and in the end, it teaches you how to be free. When fear is found, don't keep it round, or it will be your enemy. Just stand right up and face it, so you can then replace it. Combine your love with God above, and fear doesn't have a chance. Just take a positive action. Don't hesitate a fraction. Find what to do and see it through, and fear doesn't have a chance. Fear is your friend, and in the end, it teaches you how to be free. Yeah, that's very nice. Wonderful words. The... Uh, the, the the two reasons that we're here and the concept of love and the positive potential energy that comes out of love and that energy, that's something I've been thinking and feeling a lot. And definitely I've had this interesting thought process of saying, hey, look, um, you know, all of us humans are here to help elevate the positive net positive potential energy in the universe. And so we don't have a, a population problem. Maybe potentially we need more of us because we need more popular, positive potential energy uh, as a positive net flow into the universe. So I, I uh, think maybe it's just we need a, a, a lot of love. Well, that we do. But, you know, here's the thing. You know, uh, there's a whole equation that um, – uh, let's see, how do we say this in a nice way? <laughs> there's a whole equation that, you know, you can get many sheeple people, right? And there's a lot of sheeple out there that will just follow their own thing and whatever. And everybody's valuable. Uh, everybody has the per – there's not one person that's more – that's more better than the rest. I mean, the President of the United States is just as good as that street sweeper sweeping the street because you don't know how that street sweeper can affect – karma to you know not even karma but affect right. life and he may you know be sweeping a street and and uh, there might be someone that saves the world that crosses that street that wouldn't have slipped on a banana peel so nobody is better than the other okay and so basically i think it's just that you have to um you know stay and understand that there's a lot of sheeple, but if 10% of the people, of all people, it's more than enough. Because one person that's conscious is equal to a million sheeple. So we don't need tremendous amounts of people. It would be nice if everybody came to the decision to be loving and kind and have gratitude and that. But if we want to change the world, we just have to get that one person together with each other so that we can do a constant change, uh, an effective change. For example, here on HealthyLife.net for the last 19 years, we've sponsored World Healing Day with Jonathan Goldman, and he, chants, he we chant OM uh, for the planet, um, and we get 
millions of people all over the world chanting with us to the point where he has, uh, I think it's heart math or Yale University has this barometer which measures the resonance of the earth. And what happens is they measure it that time, that hour, that day that we do this. And they found that the earth resonates at a higher frequency just when just those little people all get together from around the world and chant Om for a Valentine to Mother Earth. So we make a difference. Even if you're one person, you can make a difference, you see. Or you can get just the people. So the amount of people doesn't matter. It's the quality and purity and truth, I think, that matters in where you're going. Because... One person has a lot of energy. I mean, you can when you're tapped in. I mean, I can use God energy if I need to. You see? So once you learn... Yeah, Linda, it's, it's funny you mentioned that uh, Ohm sound. Um, the, they recorded this uh, from Solar Parker or Parker Solar Probe going to the sun. They report, uh, recorded the vibrations of sun. And when they processed it, the sound is very similar to Ohm. Mm-hmm. And Om is something that has been kind of common with, uh, like Christianity says, Amen. The Muslims say, Amin. So Om, in some form, has always been a sound that probably people heard in deep silence. Uh, and it resonates. So, so that's a good, good chanting that you had. That sounds like a... Yeah, we do uh, one have... of the questions that Dan had here was, where is all this negative energy, you know? I mean, with, with all this positive energy, I mean, why does it not eliminate the possibility of this negative energy that... We, we need to grow. You know? We, the, we need negative. You know, it's the, it's the uh, universal law of polarity, okay? You know, uh, for every co- and a cause and effect. You know, you need a negative so that you could understand the positive, correct? I mean, you can't have one without yeah. the other, you know? And so... The thing is, is that we've gotten to a point where, you know, and we're not important. No offense, but, I mean, you know, when we say we want to save with climate change and save the earth, the earth is very good. You know, it can handle it without us. We're just a bunch of fleas on here, and we're annoying fleas now because we're doing everything. And now, be putting all those things up in the earth, surrounding the earth, all these satellites, now we're creating a garbage dump around our atmosphere, okay? So what happens is that the earth has its own energy, and so does the universe. And everything exists, including a thought form. So when, when you think... What we're saying when we want to protect the earth is we want to protect humanity. And we better understand that. Because all of these energies, everything exists. Everything has power. Everything does. And so we have to understand and respect. There's a, yeah, I'm Italian. We have a, you have to have a little respect, you know. So, you know, we have to respect everything. And we have to come with our best foot forward, you know. So... Linda, great. We're going to take another short break here at Relax Radio, and we'll be right back and discuss some moments with Linda. Thank you. Your world is colored with beliefs, values, and illusions, which interpret how you process the signals you receive from others. Now there's a way in which you can quickly learn how to interpret these signals correctly and without self-sabotaging yourself in the process. In Dan Reardon's book, Signals Proven Methods will help you see things more clearly so you can act with purpose and achieve your goals while attaining a more peaceful, happy life. Get your copy of Signals by Dan Reardon today at Amazon.com or wherever fine books are sold. This is Jack Maher from the band Feed the Kitty. It's important to support the artists you love, and you can do that and get something authentic for yourself. Rock.com has the most coveted, licensed merchandise of music, culture, and entertainment. So go to the advertiser page and click on Rock.com now. If you want the most compelling, universally available platform in the practicing of meditation, mindfulness, and intermittent silence, then you need to know... 
about the app called Relax.org. That's Relax with two X's because when you go to this app, you really do relax. It helps your body, quiets your mind, and connects you to your flame in the world of consciousness. It's always with you, so you can use it anytime. Isn't this your time to be peaceful, happy, and prosperous? Find out more at relax.org. Get high-quality glasses, sunglasses, and prescription lenses at eyeglasses.com. Choose from over 250,000 items and 400 brands. Already have frames? Get replacement lenses. It's easy. Go to our advertiser page and click eyeglasses.com. Imagine living everyday life on purpose. Now imagine yourself easily navigating through life's changes and stress from a soul level. For insights into the journey of the human soul, let Dr. Krishna Bada be your guide. His book, Journey from Life to Life, will help you demystify life, death, and everything in between. It gives you clarity on how you can have a successful life and a smooth transition into the world beyond. Who wouldn't want that? Get Journey from Life to Life by Krishna Bada, MD, at Amazon.com. HealthyLife.net, where positive overcomes negative. Welcome back to Relax Radio. I'm your host, Dan Reardon, with co-host Dr. Krishna, and Linda is with us for this next segment where we talk about some moments, and we're going to dive in with Linda on this concept of the cauliflower moment, where you had a belief about something, and then you questioned it deeper, and you wound up realizing that you uh, had it framed out wrong. And so, Linda, when we talk about that kind of a moment, what comes to your mind f- for you? Well, um, I don't know if uh, there's been so many. Uh, I mean, we learn by all our wrong moments, so I can't really specifically say one, but I can tell you that um, there's been a miracle moment uh, when I was when I was eight years old, right? Um, and I saw God when I was eight, and all of a sudden I had all of these different abilities. I didn't know what to do with them, and so. One of the things that I did, I remember walking home from school, and it was a long, you know, all those grandmothers and grandfathers that tell you, I walked 10 miles to school. And the, well, I did. You know, so <laughs> I did. Anyway, so I was walking, and um, it's like a voice came, and it said, and this was the first time, like right at the day after this God thing. So it was a test. Are you going to listen to me, or are you going to be willful? And sometimes I'm very willful. And I only, I learned when you let go, then things happen. So, so I went, uh, you know, I was going, um, and I didn't live in a great part of New York. You know, there was, I had uh, uh, three attempted rapes before I was 11. I mean, you know, it was a kind of seedy little area that I lived in, you know, and I, I took a lot of refuge in the church because it, my mother was uh, Bostonian Irish. My father was uh, northern Italian, and so there was a lot of yelling going on all the time, and so I would always go to church, and and I would get this solace by praying and just being there, and and even though I went to public school, I would go to church every morning, and I just, you know, it was just a calling that we had, you know, walking over the drunks uh, to get to church before school, <laughs> but, you know, it was just a, a great thing, and I was raised Catholic, but um, when I was about 18, 19, I decided uh, spirituality was uh, better than just following religion. You know, it was to be open, you know, and um, open to everything. And that has served me well. So I was walking home from school. I know, long story. I was walking home from school, and I was going to go. There was a long way and a short way to go. And I wanted to go the short way, you know. And uh, I heard this voice saying, uh, you need to go this, the next block over and up. And I'm going, I don't want to do that. I want to go up. And it, no, no, you gotta, you got to do that. And so I said, okay, fine. And then um, so I did. And um, the next day I found out that there was a murder on that corner at the same exact time that I would have been there. So that was kind of a little miracle moment as well, you know. Wow. And then, I mean, I've had, I get them every day. You know, there's miracles every day, you know. So it's hard to pick one, but that's the one, you know. Another one was when I I started this network as well. You know, I was 
up um, to do a, I had just finished uh, several documentaries and, you know, was over in London uh, uh, filming. You know, I have a capacity where, and they love it, you know, when I go, uh, they can put me on any kind of land, you know, um, and even ancient land, and I can go back in time and tell you who was on that land all the way from the beginning of time, giving you names, dates, places, whatever. And so I was over in England doing some documentaries and gave them new information on Jack the Ripper and whatsoever and whatever. And uh, so I've, I've worked with people from all over the world, um, from presidents to police departments to whatever. So, um, it, it, and I learned to, so I was uh, getting where they had offered me a crossing over with um, John Edwards, and I had said, well, no, uh, I don't want to do that because it's not in truth, and um, it wasn't my truth. I mean, maybe John Edwards did his thing, but whatever, it wasn't my truth. I didn't want to make people cry all the time. So they said, uh, sci- Sci-Fi said, we love you, Linda, just make your own TV show, and we'll do it. I said, okay, and then God came in, and God came down, and he goes, hey, and I go, yeah, and he goes, I want you to start a radio station. And I'm going, what? And he goes, yeah. He goes, I made you a datacom engineer. You were a, you lectured all over the world. You were a book. You were in radio for for eight years, nine years. I want you to do a radio station. And and I said, but I'm just about to make it big here again, you know, make a lot of money and do all this. So he goes, well, you could do that. He goes, but I just want to let you know that. He goes, right now you're lecturing. And he goes, you get a 1,000 people. He goes, so you're a point of light. He said, but if you bring more people to like you together and make a radio station, he goes, then you become a lighthouse. I said, hey, you know, he goes, uh, I said, ah. I said, but, and he goes, well, you can have the choice. And I said, yeah, like I'm going to say no to God. I said, when I get upstairs, we're going to talk. So I ended up doing the radio station 19 years ago, and we go to... 1.5 million listeners a month in 135 countries, and we've helped over 79 million people in the 19 years with positive programs. So that's a good legacy. Well, that's a fantastic legacy. Looping back on the, this concept of moments, uh, you made a statement there at the beginning that we we uh, we learn by our wrong moments. Um, what I wanted to ask you was, the thing I've been really fascinated with is, is this idea of uh, changing of beliefs and watching people get so locked into certain beliefs and then struggling to let go of those beliefs. What, what do you think causes that uh, connection or that hanging on to beliefs so strongly uh, that we can't open up and be aware of other possibilities? It's as individual as the person because each belief system, each person, how they grow up is completely unique than any other person. Each person's path, each person's individual path is unique. So when you ask, is there a reason why all these things are, um, all I can say is when you're ready, it happens. And if you're not ready, God will give you the same thing over and over and over and over again until you are and you accept truth. And when you accept truth, as I said before, you never have to live that lesson. So all you can do when you're opening up doors for people is you cannot make them walk through. And a lot of times people in this lifetime are not ready to go to the next level. So as I get old, when I was younger, I wanted everybody to understand. I never, I just knew that whatever I talked or whatever I did was right for that moment in time. And if I could help just one person from what I'm saying, that's all I needed to do. That was enough. You see? So belief systems are hard. And there's no magic turnkey thing because, as I said, everybody's different because they were raised differently. Society is different. Countries are different. You know, um, and um, so you do the best you can with what you got. That's what you do. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Well, we're going to take our final break here uh, from Relax Radio, and we'll be back for the last segment with Dr. K uh, talking with Linda, and we'll be wrapped up the show. Explore your inner universe with your own portable guru. You'll discover the benefits of intermittent silence, meditation, and mindfulness, which will help you in every area of your life. At Relax.org, you'll learn to conserve, channel, and use your energy in constructive ways while helping to keep your body healthy and your mind relaxed. Relax.org is your chance to consistently experience stress-free, purposeful living at its best. Where is this portable guru? At Relax.org. That's Relax with two X's. Feel like the super person you are meant to be? It's easy at liveandbreathesolutions.com. They don't just talk about healthy living. Their superfoods are combined with products you use daily, so you're actually getting a healthy living at great prices, too. Imagine chocolate, gluten-free organic snacks, mixes, and ingredients, all but a click away at liveandbreathesolutions.com. So make life simple to be healthier. Just live and breathe and go to liveandbreathesolutions.com. Your world is colored with beliefs, values, and illusions, which interpret how you process the signals you receive from others. Now there's a way in which you can quickly learn how to interpret these signals correctly and without self-sabotaging yourself in the process. In Dan Reardon's book, Signals Proven Methods will help you see things more clearly so you can act with purpose and achieve your goals while attaining a more peaceful, happy life. Get your copy of Signals by Dan Reardon today at Amazon.com or wherever fine books are sold. Imagine living everyday life on purpose. Now imagine yourself easily navigating through life's changes and stress from a soul level. For insights into the journey of the human soul, let Dr. Krishna Bada be your guide. His book, Journey from Life to Life, will help you demystify life, death, and everything in between. It gives you clarity on how you can have a successful life and a smooth transition into the world beyond. Who wouldn't want that? Get Journey from Life to Life by Krishna Bada, M.D., at Amazon.com. More exhilarating talk. HealthyLife.net. Back to Relax Radio. I'm your host Dan Reardon with co-host Dr. Krishna, and Dr. K is going to lead us through this final uh, discussion with Linda and the show. Yeah, welcome back to Relax Radio, and uh, this is Krishna, Dr. K, uh, with wonderful Linda. Uh, Linda, I want to circle back to the control issue. We all feel that we have control until we don't. And uh, uh, in my case, you know, I started this Relax app and I thought I had control and I was doing everything right and wrong or whatever, you know, by the book. Some things were happening and happening, but, you know, suddenly a dream team comes around and it seems like the universe wants this to happen. So this control thing. I mean, how much control do we really have on what we do? None. (laughs) (laughs) You want the truth, it's none. You have none. So what what you want to do is uh, when you're doing life in itself, is you learn as much as you can. And then you write a really detailed plan. You know, you do your marketing plan, A, B, C, D, E. Make it as as unique as you possibly can. I mean, and then what you do is you throw it away. Because what you're looking for is your right creative side of the brain is already attached to the universe, to your conscious connection, to to what what you're supposed to be doing, to God, whatever. It's already there. And so your creative thing, when your, your left logical mind goes A, B, C, D, your right side cannot create. It knows what you want. So you give it up, and then you wait for the synchronicity of the moment. When you have the trust, when you feel, know, and trust, everything is going to happen for the greater good. It happens. You know, for example, I have this wonderful movie. It's been up for almost 14 years. A large producer is supposed to produce it, and it's teaching kids, you know, how to 
transcend fear and how and what stops positive thought. And it's a great movie that the universe really needs. But I also know that when it's right, all I have to do is keep showing up and showing up. And when it's right, it's going to just happen. Okay? So you have to put it out there, but you cannot control it. You have to um, corral it in. You know, and make sure that you are doing an action every day towards that goal because the action and the energy of that action pushes the energy towards the goal. But you cannot say, I want to do this exactly like this because, you know, the universe or whatever you want to call it may want to give you more or it may want you to redo something or rethink something so that it makes it better. Because remember, when you're out there teaching or giving or doing, it's not just about you. It's about other people and other things and how the perception is. For example, if I do a psychic reading, I have to be very careful of what I say and how I say it. Because if I say something and that person takes that uh, what I say and tells it to 500 other people and it's wrong, guess who gets the karma on the other end? Those 500 people? Uh-uh. When I go to the other side, God looks at me and says, what the hell did you do? Mackenzie, what did you do? And I'll say, oh, I know. I'm sorry about that. Go back and do it again. So I don't want to do that. You know, so, <laughs> so you give up control. You You plan it out. You know, you feel, know, and trust it's going to happen, and it will, okay? And then you, um, you know, it's not like you, you uh, ha- don't show up. You do show up, and you do the things that are set before you every day. And you know what's right and what's wrong. And when, when, you're, when something doesn't happen easily, then you have to either wait. It's called creative uh, timing. Or it's, and you have to wait for the right time, but you always act with that synchronicity of the moment, and you can't go wrong. So, Linda, you mentioned it second time. You write it up, and then you throw it. Do you literally do that? I do. You know, I'll tell you what happened. Back in when I was an engineer, um, I did this seminar with uh, this great guy from McGraw-Hill, and he was saying, he goes, I want you to do this thing, and he goes, uh, he gave out books, and he said, if you're in Datacom now, if you're not a multimillionaire by this time, he goes, you know, you're, you're doing something wrong. So in the book, it w- gave you everything, what, how much do you want to make, what do you want to do? And I kept saying, oh, yeah, well, you know, I want to, every five weeks, I want a five-day vacation, yeah, I want to do manicures, I want to do pedicures, and, um, you know, I want to help the world, I want to do this, I want to do that, and it made you plan out one year, five years, 25 years, 50 years, okay? And so I did the book, and then I forgot about it, and I just threw it away. I didn't throw it away. I just put it away in, in my bookcase. Five years later, I found that book, and I opened that book, and everything that I had wanted to accomplish was already accomplished. Without even looking at it. It was because I planned it, I thought it, and the brain said, okay, this is in alignment with what you're going to do. If it's in alignment, you can get it, you'll get it, and you'll do it. And so after that, um, for this network, I plan everything out, and then I just say, okay, throw it out. Let's see what happens. Because I already know if you're really planning, you know, I was a planning engineer, so, you know, that was easy for me. But... When you're really planning, you know it's already cementing in your brain, and if it's right, it's going to happen anyway, so don't worry about it. It's a matter of free-falling, just (laughs) free-fall. So, Linda, before we uh, finish our show, I want you to tell us, you know, what is your, where do you find peace or peaceful moments in your life, like Dan does walking or kayaking? I love hiking or, you know, things like that. And music, you know, somebody, a singer finds peace in music. What's your, you know, peaceful moment or peaceful place? Um, Anything to do with nature. And it could be anywhere at any time. And, uh, you know, I've learned to, um, ever since a very young age, I can get anywhere in the world 
um, by either astral travel or, you know, I can actually, you know, go in and, and be in different kinds of places. However, um, you know, I there is a place that I go to um, psychically, which is going to seem a little crazy, but it used to be in Tibet. You know, it was in the middle of a mountain, and it would be when I was extremely tired from doing my spiritual warrior work, I would go there, and Jesus would be there, and Buddha would be there, and he, Jesus would say, hey, come over, I want you to meet this guy, and it would be Buddha, and I'd be sitting there at his foot, feet, and then he, we would talk, or, and there was always a stream, and the, you could, you had to work there, you know, like tend fields or do something, and it was a wonderful place until China came in, and they did something, and I, I um, now this is all in another dimension, but it does exist. Many multiple dimensions exist. And so now this place has been moved. But even there, I have a room there. And I can just go there. And when I go there, I sit by a stream. Uh, I talk to all these wonderful people. I go and till the soil and grow food for them because I like to do that. And I take part in the community. And that's where I get my biggest solace. Well, Linda... Really appreciate all your insights today, and, and Dr. K, we're at that end of the show time limit. I think we could keep going for another hour exploring these things with Linda, but uh, thank you to all the listeners for joining us. You can find this and other shows on demand at healthylife.net, and you can find out more about us at relaxx.org. That's our show for this week. Uh, be listening uh, for the next show next week. 